Kyle Abair. Welcome to the Game Form Show, sir. Thank you. Good for good to be here, man. Yeah, it's an honor to have you. Thank you so much for being so open and agreeing to Skype into our show. It's a it's a real pleasure to have you. Uh, awesome. So, just in general, Kyle, how uh, what's it like to be so involved with Dragon Ball? How important is Dragon Ball in your life? How often does it come up? What's it like to be so intertwined with this series? It's kind of like pinch myself. I can't believe it still. I mean, I've been doing this for 17 years. It was my first foray into voice acting, which I've wanted to do since I was a kid. So, And I was a fan of Dragon Ball before I got to be on it. So come the summer of 2000, it was like a dream come true in two ways. You know, I was getting to work on something, you know, I was already a fan of. And my first foray into voice acting and animation, which is something I've wanted since childhood. So... Yeah, it's pretty pretty awesome, and and to stand the test of time the way it has to be one of those temple franchises that uh, <coughs> like a gateway show that introduces a lot of fans to anime in general. It's pretty pretty incredible. Walk us through that audition. Like, who are you auditioning for? What was the process like? <coughs> well, I I first auditioned for for Gohan because I uh, picked up a uh, notebook at the in the Funimation front offices there they said here's the here's the guy so just pick you know maybe four or five half dozen characters you think you're good for I'm like all right i didn't recognize anybody except gohan because i hadn't seen those sagas ahead i didn't watch it in, in japanese or subtitles uh, so you anything. just knew kid gohan but you didn't know adult gohan correct okay but interesting. Knowing, but but knowing that he was going to be an adult it's like that's the one i want to read for and uh, other characters were more minor. Then I ended up getting a call back like two weeks later and ending up doing things like uh, small episodic little little bit parts on the Bardock special when it's the end of the Cell Saga. There's some little filler episodes before Gohan goes to high school. And um, that uh, that was my first foray into it. And then when they got to that, that story arc with, with Gohan and Orange Star High, they said, congrats, you know, we like your audition and do all that. So I, I got really, really lucky, you know. Um, it's my first time to read for, for Funimation. Um, heard about it through uh, some coworkers at my old radio job. I used to be a DJ on the air with Radio Disney. And, uh, <laughs> and they found out about open auditions and they knew how badly I wanted to do something like that. So, um, yeah, it all just kind of fell into place. That's amazing. So, I mean, you've gone through the saga so many times. Is there a particular chapter of Gohan's, adult Gohan's life specifically, I guess, that you're most attached to, that you get the most enjoyment out of, that you feel like there's the most meat on the bone of storytelling-wise? Mm. Well, there's there's moments in um, the other world tournament when he turns Super Saiyan 2, he powers up for the first time, and that, like, oh my gosh, it's like hair on the back of my neck. <laughs> I love the fight with, with Majin Buu. I, uh, I love that uh, what's going on, what the fans tell me is going on in Dragon Ball Super, currently in the Japanese version, that we're eventually going to get to dub into English. So it's like, make Gohan great again. <laughs> How does that work? So you get a lot of fans tweeting at you like, holy crap, you're not going to believe what's going on with Gohan now in the modern day Super? Basically, basically, you know, they don't get too spoilerific because I don't want to know everything, but I just almost like, is he cool? Is, is he actually going to bring something? You know, his <laughs> potential not going to be squandered this time. Gohan has always been my favorite character. Like, you know, calling dibs on characters with your friends was a big thing for me, my dopey friends back in the day. And I was like, well, Gohan, just unlimited potential. And the Mystic Gohan <laughs> storyline and even his relationship with Fidel, I always just loved towards the end of Z there. And I feel like it's at an exciting time in Super where... The tease, at least at the end of the Frieza saga in Super, is Gohan's back, baby. He's going to train. He knows he has to get better. Is it weird to be rooting for this fictional character to get stronger so he has more airtime? I guess that's the actor's conceit. You know, you, <laughs> you want more screen time? It's like, uh, yeah. Because uh, some of the most fun I've had with that role, something I forgot to mention, was the great Saiyan Man stuff. I mean, of yeah, course. it's silly and everything, but man, what a what a blast to get to play just this this dork trying to fit in and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, talk about the silliness. What do you think about the tone of Super in general? Uh, it has certainly struck a new tone. I'd imagine some fans kind of want a more serious take on Dragon Ball, but I just feel like Super nails it. I'm curious from your perspective, what do you think about the overall flavor of the Super series so far? I think, I think they found the right balance. I do agree with you because 
fans do love that 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 quirky sense of comedy that's that's been there in the past two movies too oh amazing leading up to super and it's like it's legitimately funny it's legitimately touching and it's legitimately action-packed too so it's like i think it's delivering on all fronts a little bit of what everyone wants you know the people that are hardcore into dragon ball they like the comedy people into z like the action and this is that that good hybrid that blend of, of of everything that people would want yeah Hey, from like the outside world, what do you think people don't appreciate about what it's like to be a main voice actor for Dragon Ball? What are the details or what consumes more of your time that we would never think of? Mm. Well, I mean, we do go in and record one actor at a time because we are matching the lip sync. We have to look at the physical animation of it and preview it in Japanese so we get the context of how loud or soft to deliver the line. And then we do it and then... Once the director's happy with the take, then we move on to the next, fast forward the episode to the next line of dialogue and fight sounds and all that stuff. And um, um, as popular as anime is, people seem to think that, oh, Dragon Ball's a huge property, you must be rich. I'm like, no, no, anime dubbing is like the low end of the totem pole in terms of voice work. It's, it's not a, a lucrative thing. Um, so you really almost have to kind of do it for the love. <laughs> But uh, it has afforded, it, it's opened so many doors in terms of my voiceover career. I've gotten to travel the world and go to conventions and see things I never otherwise would see. So it's like it, it, the payoff is in spades, getting, getting to impact people's lives in a positive way and helping open the door to them uh, to check out other uh, Japanese shows and read manga and gaming too. It's just, uh, it, it's really interesting. Uh, when I did it back in the early 2000s, and going to the convention scene ever since then and watching these kids grow up and then have families of their own and introducing their kids to it. It's generational, just like Dragon Ball itself. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's the most common piece of feedback from fans at conventions then? Do they want you to recite a line from Gohan? Do they want you to, I don't know, shout Hadouken because you're Ryu as well in the Street Fighter series? They want to hear a little of everything. You know, I'm also the narrator on Z. So like, of next course. time on Dragon Ball Z, you know, I get a lot of that. I get a lot of Hadouken. Get all that stuff and like fight you. No, I want to kill you. People like hearing that. And it's like the thing I think I hear most, I mean, it makes me feel old, but in a good way. It's like, hey, you were my childhood. And like, you know, it's like, hey, that's pretty, pretty awesome because not many people get to say that they were part of, of one's pop culture, uh, you know, raising, I guess. Yeah. Also, uh, just thinking about the connections uh, from your mouth, from your tongue specifically, Kyle, thinking about playing Ryu as well as Gohan, do you think at all about the connection and the history of the Hadouken and whether or not it's connected to Kamehameha? I think clearly the developers over at Capcom must have been influenced by the Dragon Ball series. I think a couple have even mentioned that in passing, but do you think about that odd connection between those two talents? I do. I mean, the move is so similar that I have I, I, I have a, a glossy headshot that I take with me to conventions, and it's me posing in that pose. And they say, is that a Hadouken or is that a Kamehameha? It's like, <laughs> whatever you want it to be. It could be either or, because I, I belong to both franchises. I think technically uh, Street Fighter, well, what was first? What I was think, first? I think Dragon, Dragon Ball was? would have to be first, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because let's see. Street Fighter is celebrating 30 years, right? Oh, Dragon gosh. Ball. I mean, they're pretty close in terms of the timeline. Yeah, but, uh, definitely. I, I got to track down and see if there's like a concrete example of uh, Ono or someone over there on Capcom saying like, oh, clearly we're inspired by it. But, but talking about games, since this is uh, the Game Informer show after all, what's it like to record for the Dragon Ball games versus the show? Well, uh, video games pay more. That, that's not a <laughs> more awesome aspect. Um, let's see. Well, um, we don't typically have a lot of footage to see, so there's nothing to really dub per se. We're really looking at an Excel spreadsheet. Does that, <laughs> does that make it easier overall? Yeah. What's that? Does that make it easier overall to not have to be so strict with timing? Technically it is, but sometimes you are limited on timing based on the Japanese audio because it's being animated to the Japanese audio. So we'll, we have, you know, five seconds to say this line in Japanese. So we have to take no more than five seconds in English. Right. <clears throat> it, uh, and then, yeah, yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You think you're done in one session and then six months later, Oh, we have a, a session for the DLC. And then we have a, you know, <laughs> that's going to be fun. What I mean is so, but it's a different recording studio you're going to a different director or is it consistent? 
Uh, it's, it's sometimes a different studio, sometimes a different director, depending on schedules. Uh, certainly different companies. You know, Funimation licenses Dragon Ball Z to, to video game companies to, to produce games like Xenoverse 2, now available on the Switch. Hey, hot damn. <laughs> Is and, uh, yeah, yeah. Going through, I think the Dragon Ball games and something we're covering a lot this month is just the idea that they're doing a good job of getting away from just telling the Z sagas over and over again. And this is the equivalent of asking a musician of if they get sick of playing the same song over and over again. But with the games in particular, did you get tired of having to go through, all right, here we go, the Z saga one more time with Adult Gohan. Let's get this Majin Buu saga just right. <laughs> I think at this point, we've probably given every possible fight sound and power up yell possible out of every cast member so there's probably a good archive we could probably save a lot of time and and our voices if we just say insert these tracks here but uh, <laughs> that's the cheating so uh i i think it's it's awesome to get to revisit because we've gotten to revisit dragon ball every year until super was a thing you know GT was it, and then the movies, and then we had finished those, and then along comes, you know, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, and we think, okay, well, maybe the future of Dragon Ball is in the movies, because they're highly profitable, and they're, you know, then the nostalgia bomb is is exploding, literally, so <laughs> then suddenly, no, it's super, it's a TV series, like, what? Like, man, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. What do you think about GT in retrospect? Uh, do you feel like Super is eating GT's lunch in any way? Do you still get a lot of feedback specifically just for GT? It's nice to have, uh, I guess, watch Battle of Gods and see that's kind of retconning GT out of existence. Like, let's just forget this little this little part here and let, let's retell at least some aspects of it and, and, and tinker this uh, in particular Gohan's story arc and, and where he's going. It's like, yeah, he's going to be a responsible parent and and all that but he's also going to be able to show his 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 prowess too and his strength yeah. and uh that's going to be really really exciting to get to, to get to play again especially after all these years oh man absolutely i'm curious if you can just talk a little bit about uh the the voice acting family within dragon ball are you hanging out with the same people at conventions is it the same person directing you for the show time and time again what is the community amongst the actors like for dragon ball uh, well, you know, but with the voice acting, you know, it can be a lonely existence, except in the case of cartoons, where the entire cast gets to record together. But since Dragon Ball is anime, we have to come in one actor at a time. So we tend to see each other maybe in passing as one session ends or begins, or or maybe more often on the convention circuit. So, yeah, we'll be doing Q&A panels together, signings together. Maybe during our off time, we'll go to a bar and catch up and... Or, or grab dinner, and it's like, man, this is so ironic. You know, we live in the same town sometimes, and we don't even see each other. We have to travel across the country or the world just to hang out. But uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes. It's the, the the freelance nature of voice work is everyone's going every which way, and you never know who, who you're going to run into from, from day to day. Yeah, I think I see in the credits, is it true that the voice of Vegeta then is like the voice director in the booth? Yeah. But yeah, he's Vegeta, Piccolo, Yamcha, Durex. Uh, he's juggling a lot. Absolutely. Him and Sean Schimmel, voice of Goku, uh, they, they tend to pair up and go to a lot of conventions together. And they're they're hilarious. Just great, great, great guys. Are you uh, beyond notes at this point when you're in the booth? Is there ever any feedback that's surprising of like, oh, they have a different vision of Adult Gohan than I do? No, what's nice about it is that uh, Chris Abbott has told us, it's like when we were recording Kai these past few years, yeah. um, we were, we, we have all this extra acting experience under our belt since the early Z days. So it's like, hey, we get to bring something new to the performance, but we, we know these characters. So it says, honestly, I trust your your intuition about you know how you want to read things in general. I mean, I'll still guide you as the director, but... Uh, you know, you guys eat and sleep and breathe these characters, so just bring it, breathe it to life. What do you think you uh, like added to the Kai performance that wasn't in the original Z one? I'm sorry, one more time. What do you think you added to the Kai performance in particular that wasn't in the original Z cut? Uh, experience. Okay. I think generally, just experience is what everyone brought, and I think they're they're better performances. They're 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 faithful scripts. Uh, definitely. Um, more faithful to the original Japanese translations and um, 
I think, uh, you know, because I mean, Kai's contra- controversial. A lot of people say, oh, it cuts out the filler. I like the filler. Or it's like, I like the original better. But I think just from a, an acting standpoint, I think it would do a lot of fans good just to just to check it out and say, like, hey, what do you think? Since everyone is 10, 15 plus years on in their acting careers and, and we can breathe the, this other, you know, it's not like we're erasing Z. It's still on the shelves. You can still get it in Blu-ray and, and high def and, yeah. and all that stuff. So it's not like it's trying to erase and do that like a George Lucas sort of thing. You know, Kai is just an alternative vision of it. And uh, we're all pretty proud of it. Do you have revelations about Gohan as a character? At this point, it's just something even you learned in that gap before recording Kai or something that a fan says to you where you realize, like, oh, I've never appreciated this about Gohan's character. Like, what was the last revelation you had about Gohan? Um, God, it may have just been early on that, he, you know, he showed his true colors. You know, he's, he's very innocent and naive and, and that innocent quality and yet very, very strong and trustworthy and all these very, very positive aspects that are inspirational to, you know, kids or anyone growing up watching that sort of thing. Um, he hasn't really like thrown me for a loop. Yeah. You know? It's like, okay, so he's doing something in super that a lot of people could, could criticize Goku for doing. It's like, well, you know, I'm going to stay home and be a responsible parent, you know, <laughs> or Goku is like, no, Chi Chi, you stay here. I'm going to go save the planet. So, what's more <laughs> important, being a good parent or saving the the universe? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, do you want a role model or you want someone fun to watch? I mean, come on, fans, you got you got to pick a lane here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I think Super is 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 catering to both audiences. There, it's like, look, he's a good dad. He's going to stay home for this beginning part, but then as things get a little heated up, it's like, hey, I. It's in my blood, man. I, I got to get out there and join the boys. <laughs> Do you get into uh, the storylines? Like when you get new scripts, is it exciting for you to pour through? Absolutely. You know, because when we were dubbing and redubbing maybe uncut versions of Z, it's like, okay, we've seen all this before. We've done it. And then, you know, there's nothing really new to look forward to. But every time there was a new game with new cut scenes and yeah. maybe a, alternative storylines, we would just – be all over that. We were so excited, and especially with the new movies. And now with Super, every, every week, every episode is, is bringing something new to the table, whether it's funny or serious or just outlandish. Yeah, we, we love the challenge that it brings. Awesome. Well, hey, anything else you want to say? Any other message for the fans out there? Uh, very, very thankful for the fans because you guys make our jobs possible. Thank you for, uh, immersing yourselves in Dragon Ball, the phenomenon and, uh, uh pick up all the games. Like uh, I was saying before, Xenoverse 2 is now on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we've got new games on the horizon. I'm sure you guys have seen some footage. Hopefully they call me cause you know, Gohan is, he's available. He's there. He's waiting. <laughs> um, Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, that's out there now too, so you can catch me as Ryu. And uh, some more games that uh, are just about to come out, but I can't quite say, just because that stupid non-disclosure agreement. Oh. But once they're out, you know, I'm on social media at Kyle A. Bear, and I'll, I'll announce it high from the mountaintops. Awesome. Well, hey, Kyle, thanks so much for your time, man. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Informer Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long-form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.